Hey guys, welcome to the next segment of 7 Minutes with Seema. This segment is all for runners. I mean, anybody can do this segment, but I specifically developed this for um, right after your run. So as soon as you finish up your run, um, just come on in, log on to your computer, and do the 7 minutes. Um, so go ahead and come into a downward facing dog. Bend your knees, shake your head, move side to side, enough that your hands even lift off the mat here. And then go ahead and bend your left knee, um, your right knee really deeply. Take your right foot and place it on top of your left heel. Stretch your toes, stretch back so you're really opening up through the back of that left calf and Achilles. Let your head just hang. Spread your fingers, press evenly through the hands. And then release your right foot down. And then bend your left knee. And then step your left foot behind your right ankle. So you're just putting the between the big toe and the second toe, pushing down on that heel. And that's going to help you open the back of that calf and Achilles. And again, just pressing evenly through the hands. Letting your head hang. And then release your left foot back. Inhale, roll forward to a plank drop to your knees. Take your right foot and step it behind your left. Reach your right hand over to the left side of the room and look up and over that left shoulder. So you're opening up through your right IT band. And again, you're looking over to the left. And then come back through center. And then we're going to take it to the other side. Step your left foot behind your right. Reach your left hand to the right side of your mat and look up and over that right shoulder. So again, opening up to that left side body. Try to reach into your IT band. And then come back through center. Tuck your toes under, lift your hips up and back. Inhale, lift your right leg up and back. Bend your knee, open up through the hip. Take three big circles here, just moving around. And then go in the opposite direction. And then lift your right leg straight up and back. Exhale, step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Drop your back knee down. And then take your right hand to the, either, to the other side of your right foot. And then just slowly walk your hands back. I want you to dig your heel, your right heel into the ground. Keep a micro bend in your right knee. With each inhale, find more length in the spine. With each exhale, get a little bit closer to your right leg. I really want you to, again, every inhale you're reaching forward and every exhale you're coming down. What's really going to help here is if you dig the heel down and you keep a micro bend in that right knee, you're going to reach all the way up to the hamstring attachment. Great. And then climb back forward. Hands down. Take your hands to the inside of your right foot. I'm going to pivot and turn to face you so you can see what's happening here. Both hands are to the inside of your right foot. And from here, I want you to just open up your knee to the side. Now notice I'm not sickling in my ankle joint. It's staying nice and strong. So you can stay right here. Or you can sort of pulse and get a little bit more mobility in there. If you need a little bit more of a stretch, I'd like you to walk your hands over to the left side of the room as you keep dropping that right knee towards the right side of the room. And then come back up through center. Take your hands back. And you're going to step back down your facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg up and back. Bend the knee, open up through the hip. Three big circles, opening up through that hip. And then take it in the other direction. And then lift your left leg up and back. Exhale, step your left foot to the outside of that left hand. Drop your back knee down. And again, from here, you're going to take your left hand to the outside of that left foot and straighten that left leg. What's important here is that your right hip is stacked over your right knee and you're going to have a micro bend in your left knee. 
You're going to dig your left heel down, and with each inhale, you're reaching the crown of the head forward, and with each exhale, you're getting a little bit closer to that left leg. So again, each inhale, you're reaching forward, finding more length, and in each exhale, you're folding in. If you're not feeling it in the, like all the way through the entire hamstring, push a little bit harder into that left heel, and again, you're going to feel that hamstring attachment to the glute ignite and that's really helpful making sure that we keep that you know nice and stretched open as that's where our power is going to come from okay and then sliding it back forward both hands to the inside of that left foot from here you're going to drop the knee towards the ground and again you're going to notice here that my left ankle joint is staying nice and stable here okay if you want more juice if you will, into that left hip and groin. You can take your hands over to the right and really stretch open here. So as you reach the hands, the knee continues to drop. Just breathing into where you feel tension, being aware, and then coming back up. And step it back, downward facing dog. Pedal your feet, shake your head yes, shake your head no. And then from here, inhale, lift your right leg up and back. Exhale, draw your right shin forward for resting half pigeon. So if you're feeling more flexible, this shin will be parallel, right? If you're feeling less flexible, that right knee will slide towards the corner of the room. Right, so then this has more, you have um, a deeper bend in the knee, right? Less opening, I should say. And then from here, tuck your left toes under, send the knee back. Stand up nice and tall on your fingertips. Now imagine your left hip bone reaching towards your right heel as you make your way down, coming onto your, your forearms perhaps, or maybe lowering all the way down. Notice if you're resting, on your right sit bone because you lean to the side. I really want you to work on squaring the hips off okay. and creating that space. So you'll notice that by encouraging the left hip towards the right heel, that you're gonna get a nice deep stretch, deeper. And then press back up onto the hands and we'll take it to the other side, stepping back. Inhale, lift your left leg up and back. And exhale, draw that left shin forward. So again, the setup for this pose is so important. So make sure that you take the time to adjust based on where your needs are. If you're not going to feel it enough because you're, you know, it's the knees as far in your um, heels all the way to your hip, just slow incremental changes, working your way until your shin is parallel to that front edge of your mat, which I'm not on my mat, but you get the idea, right? And then from here, again, you're lifting up to your fingertips. Take the time, imagine your right hip bone going to your left heel, and then lower your way on down. Breathing nice and deep, staying relaxed with your breath, and these kind of easier holds, if you will, it may not feel easy. It's easy to kind of lose your breath, right? So really staying focused on that breath, counting your inhales and your exhales and making them equal. And this is just gonna help you when you're out on your runs, right? Keeping your breath controlled in all situations, right? So practicing when the conditions are a bit easier is always helpful. And then press back up onto your hands. This time I'm just going to have you swing your right leg around. This is one of the things that people do the less, the least, the least amount, I should say. So I want you to come into a squat, right? So your feet are a little bit wider than your hips. If you can, try to keep your feet parallel. If you need more room, you can turn your feet out. And then take your hands to a prayer position. Ideally, we would sit here for five minutes, but since this is just a seven-minute segment, 
I'm going to leave you here and encourage you to stay here as long as you can. The key is you can start to play with different hand variations. You can work on the fists together. You can even shape shift a little bit here side to side, right? Perhaps you and your running buddies, maybe you could just have, you know, a post, a post run chat, like what went well, what didn't, maybe you were on the track, maybe you were on the trail. Um, it doesn't really matter where you were running, but anyways, I wish you luck with all of your races. I have one coming up, uh, another 50K. So anyways, good luck with all of that and stay in the squat as long as you can. Find your way here, you know, throughout your day. This is really gonna help. And then after you finish your squat, I'm gonna just show you one more fabulous stretch that I want you to hold also for as long as, you, as time permits. I want you to just go ahead and forward fold. Let the head hang. You can play it just bending the knees here, right? And then hold it, right? Just let the head hang and work on, I'll show you from the side. Notice where the weight is distributed in the feet. A lot of times we sit back on our heels and that's not gonna bring as much stretch as we want to the back of the legs. So as you shift forward, pressing evenly through the balls of the feet and the heels, and eventually working towards really being able to fold in, right, and holding these nice deep long stretches. So again, that probably would not be a five minute stretch like your squat. That's probably one to two minutes. But thanks for coming. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this segment of 7 Minutes with Seema. I look forward to our next one together. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel.